What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Cub Cooker Supernatural Podcast. If this is your first time, this is going to be a good one today, guys. Uh, I've had a really, really bad day, but it's about to get a lot better because of this podcast right here, and I'm going to explain why. Um, I thought about this. What's up, Brittany? How are you doing? I hope you're having a beautiful day. Mandy Faye, welcome. I'm going to teach you guys something today as I teach myself. Uh, This is not a video for me to preach at you and tell you how to do life. So if it comes off that way, that's not what it's about. This is about one glitch in your matrix. And I had to put it this way because this is, I'm teaching to me, I'm preaching to me. This is super important for me to understand how to be the master of my own life and how you can be the master of your own life too. Now, Christ is the master of my spirit, of my soul, and therefore he sits on the seat of my life. But what I'm going to be teaching today is something that you're not going to hear in a church, you're not going to hear in a synagogue, you're not going to hear in any type of normal religious institution. And that's okay, because I'm not here to be a pastor, but I am here to reveal something today that I think is, uh, it's going to be mind-blowing. And we're going to talk about one glitch in the matrix is all you need. I actually came outside for a reason. You guys are going to start to hear, it was quiet when I got out here. You're going to start to hear all kinds of stuff going on in the neighborhood. And the matrix is always going to try to throw stuff in your way. So what is the matrix? Let's go ahead and define the matrix here. Am I talking about the movie? Yes and no. Uh, The movie is, is one person's version or representation of what that is. And that comes from an idea called Gnosticism. You've probably heard Gnosticism demonized a lot online right now, especially amongst the religious communities. Now, I'm here to be super super open-minded. I'm not going to call anyone out. I'm not going to talk bad on any faith or any belief system. That's not why I'm here. I have a completely open mind and an open heart to what is, okay? Um, And so what is is often things that we can't explain. It's often things that we try to put a system and a process in place for, and we end up with all kinds of different faiths and religions and traditions and family things that we do or holiday things that we do or whatever. And you guys have probably experienced that too. So what I'm going to teach today is a method I have been using for a long time and I didn't realize it until today. It just all clicked. And I call it the one glitch in the matrix method. So the matrix is basically the world around us that we see. It's the physical world. Now, my theory of God and my belief in God is that he is in and through all things, all physical things that we can still see and we can still see the truth of him in all things. But the enemy owns this world, manipulates this world so that we only see the physical and Christ said to be in the world and not of the world and so the ultimate way to do that and he also said those with eyes to see and those with ears to hear he was speaking in esoteric terms I believe all the time parables he called them parables people asked him why do you teach in parables he said so that they don't hear me so that they don't see what I'm what I'm showing and so the one glitch in the matrix method that I'm going to teach today Honestly, and I mean this, I'm not overselling it when I say this. If you take what I'm teaching today and start applying it tomorrow, it will absolutely, absolutely start to change your life. And you cannot go back once you start practicing this. It's literally not possible once you see what I'm about to share with you to go back to old life. And that's exactly what Christ was talking about. And we always assume, oh, well, I'm following Christ, or I follow a church, or I follow a belief system. Why hasn't my life changed? Well, it's because the world isn't changing. The matrix is still going to show you what it wants you to see. It's still going to show up with all the problems. It's still going to show up probably with even more. It has with me. Um, but what about the, the one is mind? Uh, do you know or have 
read the uh, Cavalli on No, I haven't. You guys come on here and ask questions that um, a lot of what I teach comes from here, by the way. I do study a lot, but I really study the Bible and I really study Gnostic scriptures and I really study things like Enoch, the Apocrypha. Um, I have some knowledge into like Hinduism, Buddhism, stuff like that, but I don't, not enough to teach on it. So a lot of what I teach really just comes from here, by the way. Um, and that doesn't mean I'm right, but it doesn't mean I'm wrong. It means if you hear something here you resonate with, try it. Share the data with me. Let's build, let's build this community together because um, I don't claim to know. Um, okay, I'm back. Sorry, the internet cut out. Got super fun. Uh, supposed to have 5G on my network, and I never do. So, um, let's see. So the Book of Enoch was taken out of the Bible, right? Um, so here, here's the deal, guys. I don't know all of that. I don't know the timelines with everything. I'm just telling you, Book of Enoch is something you should read. It has secrets in it. It has truth in it. It has uh, ideas in it. it. It's been taken from a lot of different sources, but I fully believe it's something that Christ understood and would have taught on and even referenced. You can listen to Michael Heiser's book. Um, I've got it on my on my link in my profile. Um, and if you're listening, it's at cubkuker.me, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.me. That will forward you to my shop. But it's called Reversing Herman by Dr. Michael Heiser. And it's an incredible, incredible book. He, uh, let me get a drink there. He really breaks down why Christ would have taught this and why Christ's sacrifice was so important to understanding everything that we're a part of. And I take it even further than that. I, I have other beliefs, other experiences that I add into all of this. Doesn't mean I'm right, doesn't mean I'm wrong. But what I'm talking about here is the glitch in the matrix. How do you cause glitches in the matrix around you so that you can start to see through it? Because once you realize what it is and call it out for what it is, then you start to wield dominion over it. Okay? Doesn't mean it won't push back. Doesn't mean that those gaps don't try to close. But you cannot control what you don't recognize. And so, you know, the premise of the matrix is once they realize they're in a matrix... The Matrix is always trying to lull them back into a dream, lull them back into that false sense of security. Um, again, Christ said, be in the world and not of the world. He said, if thine eye be single, the whole body is full of light. So it's about bringing light into our form. And people say, well, that's demonic. Okay, great. Yeah, of course it is. Because you believe it is. Because you want it to be. Because it's simple. It's convenient. It's easy. And I'm telling you, the third eye mentality, guys, when you start to understand that and practice spiritual practice the way Christ actually taught, that's when the world changes and that's when the matrix starts to get these glitches in it and you start to see through it more and more and more. When you actually practice spirituality, you actually practice disconnecting from this physical world. And I'm not talking about going out and doing stuff to rip your third eye open, like things you shouldn't be doing. And I'm not even saying those things are, you know, I'm not going to get into that. You know, everybody says, oh, we'll go and, you know, take this or do that and it'll, it'll open your third eye. Well, yeah, it will. But you don't have any protection in that. But you do have protection in how Christ taught you to do it. He taught us exactly how to open our third eye, exactly how to go through him, through the door of him. And 99.9% .9 of people that claim to have him are arguing about everything and calling this demonic and that demonic and don't do that and stay away from that and that's not for you and this is and I grew up in one of those cultures by the way I grew up in kind of a homeschool cult unfortunately uh, it wasn't my mom that put me in that it was just the groups of people we hung out with um, and we weren't even as connected to them as they wanted us to be you know they wanted to have like burnings where they would burn VHSs that were Disney. They wanted to do all, all this stuff, you know. And it's all stuff, guys. All this is just physical realm stuff. There's more, more Matrix stuff going on. I love planes, though. There's a little prop jet going over my house. So, um, so anyway, I, and, and people accuse me of being ADD, by the way. 
I had somebody say, oh, I enjoy your live stream, but you jump around too much. You need to focus. Guys, that's just me. That's just me. So sorry. Uh, that's what, you know, everybody wants to put us on. There you go. There you go. It's been quiet, right? Like I'm just now getting going. And you got all this stuff, all this stuff. Uh, Dave says, give support. Thank you, Dave. God bless you. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for the support. Um, let's see other questions. Um, have you read the Bible entirely? Yes, I have. Absolutely. In fact, more than once. Um, I do not consider myself an expert on it, but I do, I do have a very good knowledge of it. So, um, the matrix, an easy way to take advantage of this is in the movies. As funny as that sounds. Yeah. And I talk, I talk a lot about movies being scripture, you know, uh, Christ said that all scripture is good for, uh, raising us in righteousness and understanding. And I think that that's something that we just, man, we just totally miss out on. So I'm going to put this background. A lot of people aren't going to appreciate this, but this is the, the chakra Jesus. Um, and I think it's beautiful. I made some AI artwork of this. Guys, he was a spiritual master, okay? He was also, I believe, our savior. Uh, but I think we just we strip away so much power from his message when we take away the esoteric meaning of it and the understanding that he was coming against the gods, against the reign of the gods. Why are humans sinful? The only reason we're sinful is because of the law. The law was what the gods gave us, I believe. And this is my belief. This is, you don't have to believe me, but this is the first part of making a glitch in your own matrix. When you disagree with something, you go, wait a minute. Let me follow that rabbit trail. Let me go down that rabbit hole for a minute. Because you might just start to see a glitch in the matrix there where your current paradigm and belief systems don't serve you anymore or they don't make sense. And that's one of the first ways that I ever even came to this. And one of the theories I'm working on now that I think has a lot of truth and a lot of weight in it, and I'm going to keep following the rabbit trail and keep doing it publicly and sharing with you guys the data I find. One of the rabbit trails I follow is the idea that the Garden of Eden narrative is flipped. We always thought that the serpent was bad. We've been taught that in church. But I think the serpent is actually a representation of Christ. I think it's actually a representation of the truth, of enlightenment, of the true knowledge. And that Yahweh was, because I read yesterday, go back and watch or listen to my podcast from yesterday. The two narratives in Genesis are very different. And it's two very different creatures creating. The first one, I believe, is God Most High with the triune creation, the Elohim, the Father, Mother, and the Son. And then the second one is the maker creation, making Adam and Eve out of clay. The first creation, they are not named. But Adam and Eve, if you look at the Adamic line, I think the pre-Adamic civilization is who Christ came to set us back in order with. And that what we're living in now is the thing, the thing that traps us the most that keeps us from him the most, that keeps us from our innermost self the most. Um, And again, I don't have it all worked out because I don't even think we have all the data. There's so many scriptures that I haven't been able to read that have been left out, unfortunately. So, what's up, June? Thank you for being here. Um, Let's see. Questions, questions. We got a lot of questions here. Okay. Uh, Sad for you. Don't be deceived. So that's exactly what I'm teaching. Um, uh, Something, something for Christ um, says, sad for you, don't be deceived. And here's the deal. I'm not deceived. I'm less deceived now than I ever have been in my life because now I'm open to possibilities. I'm actually open. And that's if you want to create a ripple in the paradigm around you and in the matrix around you and start to see what might be and actually follow. That's the problem with most people that follow any kind of faith system, including myself for a very, very long time, is that we ascribe to what someone else says is true rather than actually reading the words for Christ ourselves and realizing that acts does not line up with it. 
Romans does not line up with it. Uh, the Old Testament does not line up with it, unless the Old Testament God is a different God than the Father of Christ. And that's what I'm saying. When you look for the clues and you actually say, hey, wait a minute, I don't know, but I'm going to look. And I'm going to be open to whatever anyone says about it so that I can look and see where that data goes and see if I resonate with that. Because your heart will tell you, but most of our hearts are so wicked and they're programmed by the matrix that we go, no, that's, I don't believe that. Nope. And I've done the same thing. I've gone, oh, no, Jesus is my Savior. I'm not. Nope. That's, that's wickedness. That's just new age. That's this. Guys, and when you actually taste it and you realize that there's truth down that hole, it changes your life. I never thought I would be sitting here. And I couldn't be sitting here if God, if the true God had not put me through all of the crap I've been through in the last several months of my life. And I say that lightly, or not lightly. I say that uh, wanting to say another word, because today I had a complete mental breakdown. Gabby Hanna just came out with a bunch of videos where she's discovering that she's a part of the Godhead. We all are, by the way. Um, and she is really struggling. And somebody posted on her comment. She said, I pray for you that you find Jesus. And what she's saying is she's part of Christ already. Like she's found it. And this person goes further to say, you know, we'll be here when you have your mental breakdown. Like kind of taunting her. And I just, I feel for her because I feel the same way. Sometimes to break the matrix, we have to break. Let me say that again. Sometimes to break the matrix, we have to break. There's a popular ideology about high vibration that goes around right now. And I'm not a big... I love high vibration. I love to be in a state of high vibration. I think there's a lot of truth and a lot of light in that. But Christ always... He also talked about, you know, meekness. And listen to the, um, the teachings of him. You know, he talked about blessed are those who are meek. So this moment of being broken down and being on the knees of our heart or even our knees literally and, and being broken before God emotionally, spiritually, all these things where we can actually be open to new ideas because I couldn't, I couldn't even sit here and do this today. I couldn't even go live today until I had that little breakdown earlier where I was just broken before God. Like, God, if I'm going to keep doing this, I've got to be able to make a living doing this. God, if I'm going to keep doing this, I've got to be able to have you speak with me every day on this. God, if I'm going to keep doing this, I need supporters online. And you guys may look and go, oh, you got plenty of supporters. No, I don't. Like, I'm doing this full time living off of my savings because God has called me to do it. And I'm trusting him. I'm trusting him with it. And I had to go to him today in truth and in spirit. As Christ said, the day will come when you will worship my Father in truth and spirit. I don't believe he was saying you're already worshiping God but you're going to be worshiping in, in truth and spirit after I do what I do. That's what a lot of churches will tell you that that means. But I fully believe that he's saying, no, you're worshiping Yahweh now. Because he took you as a portion, Israel. He took you as a portion. But my father, the day will come, you'll be worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And that's what I believe he meant by that because that's what I see. And when you actually look at that, it doesn't change who Jesus is. It doesn't change that he saves us. It doesn't change that God loves us. But it deepens it and it makes it a heck of a lot more clear when we look around at the world and we realize that... I, look at what the number one religion is in the world right now. Just go look it up. You get back to me and tell me that all those people are right. Because we know that the path is narrow. And I'm one of the few people out here beating the drum going, guys, wake up and look. Look at Yahweh of the Old Testament and tell me that that is actually the Father of Christ because it's not the same person. Unless we serve a literal bipolar God, there's no way that that is the same God. I just don't see it and I can't see it anymore because I saw that ripple in the matrix and I saw through it. And I'm going to read you guys something today. I'll take a couple of questions here. But I'm going to read a little bit from Book of Enoch because I had some people telling me earlier on comments there. Uh, I did some videos today on Enoch being taken up, shown secrets of heaven. Serpent is the truth of the knowledge. Amen, Jackie. Thank you. Starting to see that, guys. I'm starting to believe it. I really am. 
Uh, religion is mind control. Yeah, I, I believe that tr too. So is government. So is uh, our financial systems. So is our family structures. So is our, our housing, our communities, everything we have. It's all part of the matrix, guys. It's not this one thing. It's you literally are immersed in it every day. Your music, your culture, your media, everything. It's the perfect, the perfect system to trap us. You absolutely have to go within yourself, face your fears, being open to what you think uh, is. Amen. Absolutely. Uh, to what you think is impossible. Amen. Um, yeah, and you guys come on here and debate what race Jesus was. Um, you know, he was obviously Middle Eastern, guys. He was a Middle Eastern mystic. And if you guys don't think he practiced l real spirituality, Middle Eastern spirituality, like uh, what everyone wants to call demonic now, and you go, oh, yeah, this, that's demonic. No, he knew how to align his chakras. He knew how to fast. He knew how to meditate. He knew how to pray. And he knew who his father was, El Elyon, God Most High. And he came to show us that that's our father too. I fully believe he was the word, the creative logos of God. The Word of God is the Logos, the divine computation. That's why I believe in a holy triune or a holy trinity of Father, Mother, Son. Because He is the product of the union of the divine feminine and the divine masculine together. The creative power. It's all there, guys. It's esoteric. It's deep. It's beautiful. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. Um, and I'm just sharing. Uh, namaste. What is up? Life is awesome. Amen. Got a little puff and some prayer hands. Amen, brother. Um, Jesus didn't look like a beetle. Yeah, he looks a little bit like a beetle. This is artwork, guys. Y'all giving me crap on my art. I make artwork with AI, and I program it and tell it what to paint. Um, I'm just making a pretty, pretty picture of Jesus here. Nobody knows what he really looked like, guys. I mean, you debate what he looks like, well, what he looked like. He was in a flesh form. I'm going to look different in my next form, and I look different in the form I had before this. And so did you. You hating what everybody looks like and all of this stuff back and forth. It's all about what do we look like as our truth, as our real self. And so that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Adam says it's not the father, mother, and son. Uh, what is it, Adam? And don't say father, son, Holy Spirit. Because I think, I think Holy Spirit is the mother, by the way. And I think the mother's been washed out of it by our religious institutions. So I'm just being honest, guys. Like, y'all y'all want honesty here? I got to put it out there. And I, I love all of you. And I love every belief system that comes through here. I love um, all of our brothers and sisters in here. And all of those in between, too. I don't care your orientation. I don't care your faith tradition or your religion. I don't care your race. I love you because you are not your flesh. And that's exactly what Christ came to share with us. And all of this stuff that I just mentioned is all constructs of our flesh. It's all constructs of the matrix. Uh, I want that pick looks cool. Jackie, thank you very much. I'm happy to DM anybody these picks. And I'm working on um, doing, I do pay for a pro subscription to this. And I'm looking at, if you guys have interest in this, because I've got to support this ministry. If you have interest, I'm looking at doing these as prints, where you can buy them uh, on, on a print shop online. So if that's something you guys want, just seriously DM me or comment on any of my videos. Say, hey, I want, you know, I want some prints of what you're doing with your artwork. So if you guys like that, I'll make that a bigger part of what I'm doing. Um, I also have a lot of coursework. Uh, I have a leadership course. I have a money course, and then I have, um, I've got another one, I can't even remember what the other one is, that I've never released. And I, I've been praying, like, God, how do I fund this thing, or I'm going to run out of money by the end of this year. And he's like, you've got all this stuff that I gave you, all these courses and stuff, and people ask you for stuff like that all the time. And so I'm, put, I'm working on putting those on the new website. I've got the audio book, God Giving Gifts of Brilliance, on there. So uh, a T-shirt would be great. Oh, sweet, good idea. Yeah, t-shirts would be sweet with this stuff on it. So, um, And these are fully licensed to me, so I actually you know, own the artwork, which is really cool. So, uh, G-O-D, Geometric Operations of Direction. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. 
uh, crazy. I had this conversation with my soul sister today, all of what you're putting out. Uh, Andrea, thank you so much. God bless you. I appreciate that. The law of oneness. Amen. Absolutely. Uh, how will your sins be forgiven? Because he already forgave him. In fact, he already forgave him for all of humanity. He just asks that you go through him as the door. And he told us exactly how to go through him. He told us how to see through this matrix and enter through him. He is the key, the logos of God. Once that is alive in you, you go back to God and you can communicate directly with God because of what he did. It's not by putting a statue on your shelf. It's not by saying a certain prayer. It's by actually following him by actually going through that door and having the Logos of God alive in you. Because it's already there, you just have to accept it, choose to deny the world, and actually walk in that light. And that doesn't mean denying the world like, I'm not going to shop at Target anymore. No, it's not that, guys. It's choosing to go, hey, this is all a construct. This is all the matrix. But he's truth, and he's here. And I am now truth because of that. And I am now love and light. And I am forgiven. And by the way, he fulfilled the law because the law was what gods, little g gods, I believe Yahweh created to enslave humanity under the law and make sure that we were sinful and we couldn't go back to God. And God sent his only son so that he could set us free back into that logos and that one-way connection to God. Mm, good, guys. I love you all. Thank you so much. Um, anyway, I hope you guys um, walk around barefoot uh, to go ground yourself. Doing it right now, actually. I won't show you my feet because I need a pedicure. But, um, uh, yeah, I am right now. I love grounding. In fact, when I ground out here on the porch, I'm sitting on the porch right now, I get so much more ener energy for this and just so much more flows through me. When I try to, oh, a Gnostic. Yes, I am a Gnostic. Uh, I, you know, I don't like that term because uh, it's such a blanket term such a blanket term it's like throwing any other faith term out there and assuming that all the beliefs are the same within it but yes gnosticism i definitely uh ascribe to the idea that we live in a matrix that he is who he said he was we try to put a label on him the god of the old testament is not his father but the god of the old testament his father is in the old testament we just don't look at him because We've been told that Yahweh, the old law, was his father, and I just don't believe that. I have a very hard time with it, and I don't see that the, added da the data adds up, sorry, um, if that makes sense. So, uh, How do we know the end is here, and we'll see everything in our time? Um, I don't know. I don't know. You know, we could have hundreds of years left for all I know. We could have a few. I don't know. You know, I think the end is always near for us because our flesh expires anyway, right? So I think we have to live that way anyway. Um, but at the same time, yeah, we might see some crazy stuff soon. I think the entire extraterrestrial thing is going to get revealed very soon. Um, and I think we're not going to understand what that means. But I think that if you read what Christ actually taught and you understand who the extraterrestrial gods of the Old Testament are, I think it's going to be a lot easier to decipher what all of that means. So, what is this demonic image? Sonny says, um, this is Jesus with shockers, man. We've all got him. He practiced spirituality and he taught us exactly how. Um, so, anyway, and I'm talking about how to create a ripple in the matrix around you, Sonny. So, uh, if you're into that and that resonates with you, awesome, welcome. If not, there's a ton of other good channels out there, so thank you for jump, uh, for stopping by, though. Uh, your thoughts create reality, so try not to think about the incoming. Absolutely. I also think that we manipulate more of our little personal reality than we want to think. You know, when we go, oh, you know, how could what I think affect this? Because there's so many other people involved, but literally manifesting is real, and... We have to understand that we do wield dominion over this physical matrix. So we have to understand that. ET Disclosure 2030, I can definitely see that. Um, let's see, any other good questions here? Uh, drink as much purified water as possible, absolutely. Uh, your inner child imagination is the key. It's the Christ consciousness, that aspect, the truth within you. Amen. And I was thinking about that today, too, the idea that we must become like little children. 
So a child's mind is always in like theta waves, which are super programmable. And so um, the idea of deprogramming from the matrix and becoming like a little child means that we can immediately and instantaneously reprogram ourselves back into truth and back into light and reality. This is the ascension of Christ or the transfiguration with all the chakra colors. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And if you don't and you think it's a demonic image, then like I said, there's plenty of church channels out there for you. And I love them and I watch them and I still go to a church. And that's okay. We have a ton of different opinions, guys. This is what's in my mind. This is the creative spirit that God has given me. And I get really worn out when people tell me that's demonic. I just don't see it, guys. Because I see through the matrix and I see the truth about who God is, who His Son is, and who we really are. And that's all I'm here for. Is I just want all of us to collectively realize that and start to bring this light back into the world. Because that's what we're supposed to be doing, guys. Oh my God, I love this one too, Jackie says. Thank you, thank you. Well, if you guys like it, I'll be looking for a way to do like some t-shirts or you know just stuff that we can maybe print this on where um, you guys will have access to that. Because I think it's really cool and I'd love to have some stuff with this on it. So I've started to get a lot better with how I use this AI technology and kind of telling it what I want. So uh, Rose with heart size. Thank you, thank you, Rose. I appreciate that. Uh, I used to be a painter, actually, and now I can create with AI, and I love, love, love it. So, uh, If you can hop on YouTube at night and listen to meditation music, chakra music, absolutely. Um, let's see. How great would it be if the Demiurge's motivations come to align with that of the Divine Spark and we can be on the same side? I am not 100... That would be awesome. And I think that day is... I think that's part of what the Day of Reckoning part of what the second coming of Christ, part of like, I think it is an awakening. And apocalypse means the unveiling. Apollyon is the unveiler. Like it's not just, even Shiva in the Hindu culture has like this inherently good side. And it's not just this evil thing, like this destructive force. It's this, you know, the potential to literally create new worlds. And so, you know, and I'm not saying Shiva is God, and I'm not saying Apollyon is God, but I'm saying these angels, these extraterrestrial beings who can transmute between the spiritual world and the physical realm, and they live in higher realms, I think that they are divine beings, and we need to have some reverence to them, but worship the one true God. And I think that's a big key to all of it. So, um,. I have my card ready to buy. Jackie says, thank you very much. I will drop that. I'll look into it this week and see what I can figure out with that. So, And I'll be sure and post it here um, when I get that figured out. So, uh, This one is awesome. Uh, 74 Leathercraft says, thank you so much, Jacob. How are you, brother? Uh, it's hard to avoid all you want to uh, be. It's hard to avoid all you want to be preaching the only truth. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. The more open you are to angelic beings, the more often they will show themselves to you. Absolutely, guys. And we have to trust that if we're worshiping El Elyon, one true God, God most high, and that the logos of him, which is the, the revelation of his union, his divine union, uh, with you can call it the Holy Spirit, or I believe it's the Divine Mother, um, then he's the culmination of that. He is the creative force of that, the Logos, the Word of God, the divine computation that that literally lives in us once we allow it to raise to new life. And that means, what did he say? You must go and sell everything, leave your old life. In fact, you must, and in the, um, the Gnostic text, it says that you must find a corpse to find your life. Talking about like you must find that your old life has passed away. Like this very esoteric, not literally, guys, very esoteric, um, hidden meaning of like leaving your old life. I have literally left my old life, and I have found this. And so you can think one of two things about me. You can think I'm deceived or I'm absolutely insane, whatever you want to think. Or you can think that, hey, God led him to this. He's left everything. The guy is starting to un unravel some things that need to be unraveled, and I'm very intrigued by this. And a lot of people say you, you totally agree with me, and that's awesome. 
A lot of people don't. A lot of people say, I'm going to pray for you. I hope you find Jesus again. I Guys, I've found him. He's here. I'm part of him. And I was always wondering why I couldn't find this church Jesus. When I realized that he's here already, I'm already a part of him. I don't know. I just think it's beautiful. So, um, let's see. Where do you do your preaching besides TikTok? Uh, Leonard, uh, it's everywhere. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Pinterest, um, my podcast. You can find everything over on cubcooker.me, C-U-B-K-U-K-E-R.me. Also, my new audio book is over there if you guys want to check that out. Um, it's pretty rad. Um, I worked very hard on it, and it's it's about what we're talking about tonight. It's about uh, unleash, unleashing your inner Christ, your inner creativity, and actually manifesting that in the world. And so many people struggle with, what should I do for a living? How can I serve? How can I make money? How can I have a better family? How can I be a better husband? How can I be a better wife? Like The key is there, guys, and it's all in Christ. But the problem is, is the church tells you, oh, it's in Jesus. Just go find Jesus. We expect for life to be better when Jesus called us to so much more. He called us to realize that we are Christ's, that he is in us, that we are divine creatures, that God is in us, the kingdom is within us. And once we realize that and we go, wait a minute, wait a minute, then we start to see the world as it is. And then we start to reign over creation the way God intended this is my book, God Giving Gifts of Brilliance, A Field Guide to Walking Your Path of Christian Success. This is written from an exclusively Christian point of view. However, it's very New Age Christian still in here, as people call me. So you still get my whimsy in it. It's not dogmatic by any stretch of the imagination. The next one will have the word spiritual in it and not just Christian, but it'll be looking at... I'm working on my second book now. When I wrote this in 2020, I was very much steeped in church theology. But God even made some crazy cool things come through through this. So as you listen to this book, you're going to love it. I promise you'll love it. If you don't, let me know and I'll make sure you get a refund. But it's God-given gifts of brilliance and it's narrated by me. I get to literally expound upon it. It's about four and a half, five hours long. And I promise you, I'm listening to it for like the third time now. I'm listening to my own book. And I'm learning from it. And God is just pouring more of this truth into my life. And I really, really, really encourage you to pick it up. Because A, it supports this ministry. And that's the number one thing you can do for me. If you love what I'm doing, get the book right now. That hugely, hugely supports me. You can either get it through a membership to Audible. Or you can go straight over to Apple and buy it on the Apple audiobook too. So you guys that want to say thank you to what I'm doing, it's 12 bucks, And it means the world to me. I get like eight bucks of that after all the fees are done so uh i'm halfway through your book great read uh, Ro uh robert yingling oh good name good name thank you robert i really appreciate that um and if you could robert i know one more thing to ask you review it on amazon just go write a review with your profile like your google profile and that really helps it rank and get more people under it so thank you guys so much I really think the Most High is using you, brother. Madman says, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Uh, do you think Enoch was talking about aliens taking him to Mars in that scripture? Yes, yes, let's get to Enoch, guys. Um, let me pull up Enoch. I've got a brand new, you guys like this AI art? Check this out. I made some of Enoch last night. I do, I do all this artwork while I'm laying in bed. And it's just so cool, guys. I'm having so much fun. Let's see. Here's more Breaking the Matrix. I like that one. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, Enoch. This is super cool. Also made some that I'm going to talk about the dreams I've been having, which are super cool. Uh, here is... Oh, I actually made the Triune, which I'm going to do on another another podcast. Here is... where is Where is he? I've got Enoch being told the secrets of the kingdom. Oh, I know my phone's on low power. Um, there he is. Okay, here's Enoch being shown the secrets of heaven. Sorry to put my face in it for that long. Anyway, this is a live raw podcast, and you guys have seemed to enjoy it. It's highly reviewed, so I appreciate you guys being here. Um, so here's Enoch. 
being taken by the angels on a trip, a journey through the heavens and the ends of the earth. And guys, the things that he's talking about, I'm about to read here. Angels took and brought me to a place in which those who were there were like flaming fire. We talked about the UFOs. We talked about how uh, in Exodus it says that um, the, the entity coming at him looks like amber enfolding on itself. We see those UAPs, UAV, uh, UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomenon, unidentified flying objects, whatever you want to call them. You see them, they glow at night, and they look like they're unfolding on themselves. They disappear and stuff. And it says, and when they wished, they appeared as men. How many abductee stories do we have from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, even this year, where people are taken by these entities and they see that they manifest and they look, you know, human-like-ish, like a man. It's right here in Enoch, guys. Enoch's reference in Genesis. There's a lot more to Genesis than we've been told. There's a lot more to the gospel than we've been told. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. You just have to actually put the pieces together. And when someone like me is here to say, hey, here's the pieces, don't ignore it. Like, follow the trail with me. Look at who Yahweh is and look at who El Elyon is. And don't, don't just Google and get the church answer because that just puts you right back on the matrix path. But look at the Greek, look at the Hebrew, look at the words for yourself, look at how all this fits together and read Enoch. Enoch's been one of the biggest keys in my life to unlocking all of this. Madman says, yes, thank you very much. Robbie says, hi, what's up, Robbie, how are you doing? Enoch goes on, he says, and they brought me to a place of darkness, to a mountain whose point and the summit reached heaven. And then I saw the places of the luminaries and the treasury of the stars and thunder in its uttermost depths. I can already hear it. That, that low rumble. Madman says facts on facts. That's what we do here. Thank you so much. Um, thunder in the uttermost depths. And there was a fiery bow and arrows in their quiver. And the fiery sword and the lightnings. And they took me to the living waters. Into the fire of the west which receives every setting of the sun. And I came to a river of fire, which the fire flows like water and discharges itself into the great sea towards the west. Hmm, that sounds like a volcano to me. I don't know about y'all, but that literally sounds like a river of lava. He probably hadn't seen this stuff before, but if he's taken in a vessel by an angel, what's the angel? Why did he see these rooms? Why did he see the fire but it was cold because it's all this technology guys it does not take away their divinity they are much higher beings than we are they can transmute in the spiritual they can manifest as men out of these why do you think if we found all these craft on the planet that we're not flying them we might be flying something similar to them in some of these deep ops things but i'm telling you they psychically and spiritually control this technology and we don't have a clue how to use it. And I guarantee you, we may have stolen a few little things from them, but we're nowhere near, and we will never get that. We'll never get that until God comes, the gods return to the earth, and people fully realize because Christ fully manifests the, the veil. What does it talk about? The veil in Revelation being pulled back. The stars in the sky will be rolled up. We're going to see things as they really are, guys. Uh, cool. Do you got Bible app? If so, uh, learn something cool. Yes, I've got the Bible app and I read it every day, Robbie. Uh, I never knew the word. I am native, uh, and we're different, but I had an experience, uh, where I believe. Awesome. Awesome. So, sorry, there's a train going by, guys. Um, I live on the edge of town, so... And the neighborhood over here has asked them to stop blowing the horn because it's supposed to be a no-blow zone now. But now they do it, like, religiously. And they do it, I think, just to mess with the neighborhood. All the time. They didn't used to do that. So, so I want to wrap up here, guys. As that train goes by and we have a segue... Let me wrap this up. I'm going to read something from the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas, which is a beautiful, beautiful gospel. If you have not read it, 
Uh, I do have it on my profile link on my website. So, the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas. I'm going to read the first couple of Logion in it. If I can get to it. Oh, come on. I know I have it on here. There it is. I was on the wrong one. Okay, so the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas. So it's written in Logions, or what we would call verses or chapters, you know, in our in our modern Bible. So, um, okay, I got a new iPad, and I'm still learning how to use it here. Okay, Yeshua said, Whoever lives the interpretation of these words will no longer taste death. Yeshua said, Whoever searches must continue to search until they find... When they find they will be disturbed, and being disturbed they will marvel and will reign over all. And guys, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Go make a ripple in your matrix today. Look under that rock, dig within, read that extra scripture, get outside your own head on all of this, and start to realize what we're really a part of. And Christ came to set us free into this. And if he's within you, let him live. Let him roll back the veil for you today so that we can all see this together. Leonard says, New Age is the latest rage. It's the hippest way to find God today. It's the only way to find God, Leonard. It's the only way. Think about what you just said. Go back and watch this entire live stream, Leonard. God is there and he wants us to find him. And I'm not talking about crystals and all that stuff. I'm talking about the one way to God is through Christ, which is in you. And you've got to see through the matrix so that you can see what is what is real reality. It's all there, guys. He spoke, Jesus spoke in esoteric terms. That's all he did. And if you go read it as an esoteric doctrine and understanding, it changes you. And it changes the life you live. And it brings joy into your life. It has for me. That's all I'm saying. I'm not here to preach at anyone. But I'm telling you what I've found. And people reach out and call me new age. Call me a hippie. Call me a whatever. you, You name it. I've been called it. But I'm here to tell you. I'm here to share a gospel with you. That I've found. That I believe is so deep and so beautiful that it can actually change our lives. Anyway, I love you guys. I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful evening. My phone's about to uh, run out of charge here. So go check out Gospel of Thomas. It's on my website. Yeshua said, If those who guide you say, Look, the kingdom is in the sky, then the birds are closer than you. If they say, Look, it is in the sea, then the fish already know it. The kingdom is inside you and outside of you. There's a field around you as well. The kingdom is inside you and outside you. When you know yourself, then you will be known. Know yourself, you'll be known. And you will know that you are a child of the living Father. But if you do not know yourself, you will live in vain and you will be vanity. That is the Gospel of Thomas, Logion 3. It's a beautiful, beautiful gospel, and it beautifully complements the gospels we have. And when you put them all together, you start to understand some of the other stuff around it. Is someone trying to build a new church? Someone trying to understand what he said? Someone trying to doctrinalize what he said rather than let it be a living truth? Have a great night, June says. Andrea says, thank you, thank you guys. Uh, you are just another TikTok preacher with the only truth. No, sir. Go back and listen, Leonard. Uh, Leonard, cool man with the sunglasses here. Uh, love your profile picture, brother. Um, go back and listen from the very beginning. That's what I'm saying. I don't have the answer. I'm telling you what my answer is for me. Only you can do you. Only you can figure out your path. So, uh, Too Inquisitive says, thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, question is, why did they say the book of Enoch is not real? We talked about that earlier. Um, it reveals a lot. It reveals a lot. I'll just leave it at that. Go check it out, guys. You'll be blessed by it. Book of Enoch, got it right here.
can't see it because of the green screen. But anyway, I love you guys. Have a beautiful night. I don't want my phone to shut off before this is over. So y'all have a beautiful, beautiful evening. And seriously, love and respect to everyone on here. I'm not here to preach at anyone. Find your path. God has that path for you. I don't care what walk of life you are. And I'm not here to just be a hippie new age preacher. I want, truly want everyone to find peace and love and joy in their life. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Peace.